right now. I want to welcome to the program from Solid Concepts, Mr. Ken Firestone is with us. Ken, how are you, sir? Good. How are you, Cam? I'm great. Thanks for joining us through the uh, again through the wonders of modern technology. Uh, uh, we're uh, we're with you in uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, all right. So tell me about this. You all say that you have you have uh, uh, created the first 3D printed metal firearm, correct? That is correct. It's a model Dr. M1911 uh, Browning, and it's uh, fully functional. It was made out of stainless steel, and it's about 34 uh, direct metal laser centered parts on it. Uh, the only things that we didn't manufacture were the was the mainspring and uh, the uh, spring steel piece on the inside, and the screws and screw bushings for the grips. This is, I mean, this is incredible. Uh, you know, most Americans, I think, are still trying to wrap their heads around the concept of 3D printing, generally speaking. Uh, and, you know, most of the time when we think of 3D printers, we're thinking of, like, maybe the maker bots, something that's going to be using plastic. Uh, the idea of using powdered metal uh, to, to uh, create things with 3D printers is, i got to tell you, it's, it's mind-boggling to me personally, Kent. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, 3D printing has really proliferated over the last few years, and but everybody thinks of it the same way, like you said, a maker bot. Um, laser centering uh, for both plastics uh, and metals has been around for 20 plus years. The metals is, is newer. Uh, plastics has been around for over 20 years. The metals more like the last 10. Uh, but, uh, you know, one of the things that we wanted to show with this, uh, with this part or with this gun was that the metal uh, properties you get off of the, the laser centered metal part are basically equivalent to what you could get out of uh, a traditional manufacturing method. You know, gun control advocates, I'm sure, are going to freak out about this. Uh, we've already seen, uh, I think last week, the Philadelphia City Council uh, introduced a measure to to ban the, the uh, manufacturing of a firearm using 3D printed technology. I don't know if they specified uh, what material could be used there, but uh, there, there is a lot of hype, I, I think, uh, surrounding 3D printing, a lot of misinformation, a lot of people who are uh, presenting this out to be uh, uh, some, you know, scary new technology. But, you know, as, as you point out, I mean, this is really a, a, a manufacturing revolution. How do you think this will impact the firearms manufacturing industry, which is where I think really where we will see the impact? Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to have a huge effect. Uh, we actually uh, got our uh, Type 7 FFL license earlier this year because some of our customers are the major gun manufacturers. And where they use us is in uh, mainly in R and D. Uh, you know, they, we do different types of parts for them to test out new designs, new models, and they actually use the parts. Now, I don't know if we've ever made a barrel for anybody, and that was obviously the one that everybody was the most concerned about of, of the whole assembly tree. But uh, you know, maybe now they might uh, consider having us do that. Uh, and this is not uh, uh, cheap. You know, maker, you, you could get a MakerBot 3D printer for you know a little over $1,000. Um, you will not be able to buy uh, this equipment and, 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 and start printing uh, metal objects for that same amount of money, right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, they run, uh, depending on the options you get, they're anywhere from six hundred dollars to $750,000. And then you have to put them in a, you know, a pretty controlled environment. Uh, we run uh, argon gas in the machine to get in an art chamber, and that's not cheap. So, I mean, this isn't something you're going to do in your garage. All right. Uh, you know, we are in the infancy uh, of, of, of this manufacturing revolution. And, and Kent, it must be really exciting to be uh, involved in this sort of, you know, on the cutting edge. I mean, how, uh, take, take, take it outside of the gun industry for a second. Um, and, and, and I'm going to ask you to, you know, look forward, let's say, a couple of decades into the future. How big an impact will this 3D printing revolution have on, on consumers, generally speaking? Uh, you know, I think on consumers, it's, it's going to be slow and steady with the low-end printers. I think where we'll have uh, bigger impacts and, you know, greater, greater increases year over year are going to be in industrial applications. And that's been the case uh, in the industry for the last, you know, five to ten years. Uh, it's only been about the last ten years that uh, laser-centered plastic parts uh, have been being tested and put onto airplanes as ducting and things like that. Um, I think metals, uh, there will be metal parts on a, a GE aviation engine in uh, 2015. Uh, so, you know, I think it's, it's slowly going to get there. And uh, we, every year we see our percentage of end-use parts go up by about 5% of our total revenue. 
So we're constantly shifting that prototype to production mix that we have lived off of for, for the, you know, the last 20 years. Wow. All right. Well, listen, Ken, I really appreciate you coming on the program. I got to ask you, by the way, how does it shoot? Shoots great. Um, <laughs> we actually put a new video out uh, yesterday that has uh, shows a 500 round uh, test we did on Friday. Um, I, I'm in that video shooting a little bit, but the guy that did most of the shooting is our kind of our resident gun expert. And you know, if you, if you see that video, you'll see there's there's it shoots very accurately. Very cool. Well, listen, I appreciate you joining us on the program this afternoon, and uh, wish you the very best. You're very welcome. Thank you, Cam, for having us. Absolutely, Kent Firestone joining us with uh, Solid Concepts.